Hi, this is another in the series of videos I'm doing on downloading data from Etsy. So taking you through each of the files in turn. And in this one, we're going to concentrate on your Etsy order item file. So in this video, I'm going to show you where to find the file on Etsy and how to download it onto your computer, what the file shows you, so what columns of data it contains. Um, if there's anything in particular you need to watch out for, so um, things to do with strange formats in the data or what some of the columns show you or don't show you and why you should perhaps download this information and what you can use it for. If we haven't met before, I'm Sarah. I'm the founder of Made on the Common where you'll find bookkeeping spreadsheets and other helpful resources that will enable you to make sense of your business finances. So your Etsy order by item file, um, this according to Etsy is a report of your sales at an individual item level. And basically it will show you one line for every item that you've sold um, per order. So you'll get kind of multiple lines for a single order if you've sold more than one item. So let's start off by looking at where you find it and how you download it onto your computer. So to find your order item file, you want to log into your shop manager from the dashboard. Go to Settings, Options, Download Data, and then under this Order section here, where it says CSV Type, we're going to choose Order Items. So don't just choose Orders, that will only show you one line per order, and I'll cover that one in a different video, but for this um, instance we're going to look at Order Items. Um, you have two options when it comes to your time period. You can either download a whole year at once, so these are always calendar years. So if I want the whole of 2022, I would leave that same month and then just click download CSV. Or you can download a particular month, so if you just wanted February 22, select that there and then we'll click download CSV here. And you can see it's appeared down here and it will always be called Etsy sold order item. So next I'll show you where to find that on your computer and how to save it into a folder. So in my downloads folder you can see this is the file that's just downloaded. It will always be called Etsy sold order items and then it has the, uh, the year and then if you just downloaded one month it will give you the month number as well. So I don't want to keep it in downloads because it will get lost so under my desktop I actually have a folder called Etsy order item files. So I'm going to drag that onto my desktop and then just to make it easier I'm then going to drag it from the desktop into that Etsy order item files. Now your computer might be slightly different depending on if you're using a Windows or a Mac um, but you should be able to set up folders and save your items in there. Then every month I'll be able to add to my files into here and I know exactly where they are next time I want to come and use them. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to open this up and then I'll show you what it contains. Okay, so I've opened up the order item file in Excel. Now you do need to open these up in a spreadsheet program. So I'm using Excel. You could use Google Sheets or Numbers for your Mac or any other spreadsheet program that you've got access to. Um, if you try and open it up just in like a Word document or a, a notepad, it will just look like a big jumble of data. So opening it up within a spreadsheet separates it out into the nice neat columns that you see here. Um, I've just added a bit of colour coding just so it makes it a little bit easier to see what we're looking at. Um, so we start off with the sale date, you've then got the item name, now this picks up the title that's on your Etsy um, item, obviously on your listing, and it's the title that it was at the time that you sold it, so if you update your titles and change it you'll get different names appearing in here. Um, you then get the full name of your buyer, you get the quantity of the item sold, so obviously this goes down to an item level within each order, um, so it's the quantity of that item. You then get the price, this is the price of an individual item, so on this line here you can see that we sold three of them, they were £5 each, um, and if you go over here to the item total you see that's where you get the total, so that's three times five is the 15. Um, if you'd offered discounts, you get the details here, so you get the coupon code, the details, and then the actual amount. Um, just to point out, again, something slightly weird on here, 
if you look here that's one single order it's the same discount but it's added it all onto the top line it doesn't actually take your discount down to an item level um, only an order level so it just applies it to the first line on each order the same with um, delivery again your delivery is charged at an order level not an item so it actually just adds it onto the first line so in this case it was five and it just adds it to the first line of the order um, so even though some of it applied to this second line that doesn't show up um, if you've added any delivery discounts you would see it in here um, just um, in the same way as on your order file your discounts appear as positive on here but they actually get deducted um, in the kind of to get to the true order value you then get any order sales tax um, again as with the order file use this column with a hint of caution it doesn't show all taxes that etsy have added to your order um, only specific ones um, if it's collected on your behalf i think and only in the states and someplace in canada things will show up in there um, things like vat do not show up in this column and then your item total again it's a slightly misleading column you would think it would be the sum of everything that's on here it isn't it's purely your price times your quantity it doesn't include discounts and doesn't include any shipping or taxes so you can see down here where we did have a discount and we had orders it's only picking up the numbers in this column so the only time that that is any different to the price is if you've got multiple quantities so like that line there this column is equivalent to the order value on your order order file um, so it's kind of the item value that you've sold and then these would all show up separately on your order file the currency is your listing currency so in most cases most sellers um, list their products and get paid in the same currency um, in this case it's gbp in certain countries some sellers prefer to list in a different currency i know some canadian sellers get paid in canadian dollars but actually prefer to list the items in us dollars so this would show usd and these numbers would be in us dollars here um, you then get two codes you get a transaction id that's for so basically every single line gets a transaction id code um, and your listing ID is linked to the item that you've sold. Um, this can be useful because, if, as I said earlier, if you change your item titles, you get different names in here. So it's difficult to, say, filter and see all of one product if you've constantly been changing names, particularly if you have seasonal items. Your listing ID stays the same as long as you list an item when it auto renews or manual renews. It keeps the same listing ID. So that's one way that you can filter your items which is quite useful you then get two column more date columns you get a date paid and a date posted if the date posted is blank it means it's an open order um, this can then be useful to use as a kind of a list of all the orders that you need to work on um, you then get the shipping information so name full address city state or province or region your zip or postcode and country so that's kind of that you get your order id which again is useful if it's nice and that you sell with variations and personalization that will all appear in this column um, it all tends to get bunched together so it's it's not particularly useful if you have multiple variations but again it would at least give you the information if you wanted to use it um, as a kind of a production file for your what you need to work on you then get some information on how the order was taken, um, that it was an online order. Um, I think this always says listing. I don't think I've ever seen anything else in there. Payment type, if it's gone through Etsy Payments, it's normally online CC. If it's gone through something like PayPal, I think it's online PP that shows up in here. I think if you use a square card reader and use that link to your Etsy shop, it would show information in here. In most cases, it will be blank for people who purely sell on Etsy. And then it does have a column in here, which is um, interesting. It shows the VAT paid by the buyer. So this is to do with tax charged by Etsy and retained by them. If you are a VAT registered seller, um, for example, in the UK, and you need to handle your own VAT, 
it will not show up in here um, because you have to manually strip it out of your numbers. Um, so this is purely VAT um, charged by Etsy. I think it also includes some sales tax that Etsy charge. Um, it's a fairly new column that's just started to be using. Interestingly, it doesn't appear on the order file, only the order by item file, which is slightly strange, but there you go. Um, and then the final column is your SKU. So if you have your own product code set up on Etsy, it will pull that through. So this again can be useful. Effectively, you can use the listing ID for the same thing, but this, if you sold on multiple platforms, this can be useful because you can have the same product codes running across kind of Etsy, Amazon, eBay, that sort of thing. So that's again is useful to get product level information. So that's it. So that's all of the columns that you see. So um, in contrast to the order file, you don't get anything on payment processing fees, um, but most of the other information is there, which can be useful. Um, and obviously it goes down to an item level. So I do find this one more useful. There's a few areas that you just need to be wary of, which I will go through um, now. So the areas to watch out for on this file are very similar to those on the order file. Um, and that is dates, um, kind of values, the taxes and uh, refunds. So dates, um, so again, as with the order file, if you're in a country that doesn't use the US date format, um, you might have problems getting your dates recognized probably in your spreadsheet. Um, so Etsy data is all based on the US date format, which is month, day, year. So you can see here, this would be the 12th day, sorry, the 13th day of the 12th month. If you're in a country like the UK or you're in Europe or some parts of Canada, your computer would be set up to read that as, as, the, as the 12th day of the 13th month, which obviously doesn't exist. And so you would get an error if you tried to kind of pull out a month or sort these by month. Um, for dates kind of below the 12th of the month, um, your spreadsheet will try and read it because obviously it will recognize it as a date, but it will recognize it incorrectly. So in this case, it would view this line as the 12th day of the ninth month, so the 12th of September, whereas really we, in kind of, that's actually the 9th of December, but your computer is just not set up to read that. It's all down to the regional settings on your computer. You will need to convert this date if you want to kind of sort it by month or do anything kind of else with it. If you're using a bookkeeping spreadsheet from um, from myself and made on the common, it will have a date conversion built into that if you're using anything other than the US um, files, which is why I have different versions for different countries. Um, it will automatically convert that date for you. You will run into the same problem with these two dates as well. Um, so if you're wanting to do anything with this or pull it into an order confirmation or an invoice, again, you will just need to have a date conversion to sort those dates out for you. Uh, for some reason, some of the other files that come down from Etsy, the dates do work and do convert automatically, so I'm not sure why the two order files are particularly problematic for this, but that's kind of dates. So the next um, issue that you might have is, let's do currency next. So as I said, this currency is your listing currency. Um, if you list in a currency other than the one that you're paid in, then your order file, your order item file numbers will be in that currency. So if I'm based in, in the UK, but list my products in US dollars, these numbers that you see here will all be in US dollars. Obviously, if you're wanting to then combine that with any other information, which may be in GBP, you might need to convert it. Um, you can use a conversion bill off the Etsy payment account um, because your order total will be the same in both kind of files and you can convert it back but it's, it's a little bit problematic. Again, um, my bookkeeping spreadsheets will do that for you. So if you list in an alternative currency, I do have versions that have a multi-currency kind of functionality built into them to convert that. Otherwise, like I said, just be aware that you, you might need to convert these back to your payment currency. Um, the third thing is actually, again, to do with the numbers. So as we mentioned earlier, um, this number isn't really complete. It's only your item price times your quantity and it doesn't build in any of these other figures. The other issue is that nowhere in this file are any taxes, um, well not actually, not all taxes that Etsy might add on to your total order value. So we did mention right over on the, the side, 
So if there's VAT added by Etsy, it does show up on here. If there's some of the sales taxes or the Canadian province taxes, it won't. And if I show you an example of this, um, I think if we use this line here, so this is an order that has gone to the States. You can see here the item value is 750. If I just show you the um, order equivalent of that order, you can see the 750 there, but you can see that the customer actually paid £8.12. Um, and the difference is the tax, but you don't see that kind of back on the order item file. On the order item file, you only see the 750. Nowhere in this file is that additional tax kind of shown. So it's very difficult to just use this file. I would always say you need to use this file combined with your order file to get to your kind of final numbers and to see what the customer's actually paid. Um, the final issue, again, very similar to the order file, is refund information. There is no refund information built into this file at all. So if you've sold, so if, I'm, if I sold that, that order and I later refunded it, um, if I refunded it in full and then came to rerun this file, that line would disappear completely. You just wouldn't even know that it was ever there. If I'd partially refunded it, it won't show any difference on these numbers. They will always show up as the initial sale value with no refund information on here at all. So you need to just be wary of that and, and not view this as a, a final kind of file because it just doesn't include any of those refunds. So now that we've seen what it shows you and what the problems are, the final bit is to say, OK, well, what, what should I use this file for? I would use your order by item file um, as a way of keeping track of open orders, particularly because it gives you that information on the individual items and any variations. So it's a great kind of way of sorting your orders and knowing what you've got to work on. You can use it for basic sales statistics. So some of the um, things you might want to look at are number of lines per order, kind of quantity per order. You can also see trends of products sold over time. So it's a great file, great to use this alongside your order file for some really good sales analysis. So you can see your most popular products and what's working and what isn't working. Um, and also if you combine it with your order file, you could also use it to automate production of customer order confirmations and invoices if that's something that you want to sell out to your customers. Thanks for watching. I'm Sarah from Made on the Comment and I'll see you next time.